Hello, I am Spark Runner 1900 and I am here bringing you a Stormworks tutorial, I guess, as you could call it. Uh, what we'll be doing here today is well, I'll be showing you how to set up a microcontroller I have made for trains or locomotives, as I like to more commonly call them, um, as that's what they are for. Anyhow, let's get into it. So this uh, microcontroller I have made and will be setting up for you today and showing you how it works is the Advance of the Locomotive Control uh, version 1 uh, and uh, this kind of bit of context into this before we get into this I will be going over a list of recommended parts that you probably want on your said locomotive to get it working with the microcontroller and uh, I will be using railroad terms as well, which I will kind of go over with you as well. Uh, somewhat railroad terms at least. Um, anyhow, let's uh, get in, get started with this. So, first off, you'd probably want to download this off the workshop. I'll have a link in the description for that. And also, I will be putting this locomotive on the workshop too, uh, if you want to mess around with that too. Uh, with us today, we have a GP9 general purpose unit. Uh, this is in the JLC paint scheme, my own railroad, Jesse Line Central. Uh, now, this um, microcontroller that I have here is basically going to be based off of the diesel electric locomotive system type deal. So, what that means, diesel electric, you have a diesel generator back here, and then you have which, you know, and then turns turns a generator back here which powers electricity for the truck sets. There will be these right here. Depending what country you're from, the name of these will vary, like bogies or whatever, but for now we'll call them truck sets. Alright, getting into this. So what we'll do, we'll put down the uh, microcontroller here. Uh, now I'll go over the list of parts really quickly. You will need, or probably need, You'll need dials for, you know, measurements of, you know, stuff like the throttle and the brake and stuff like that. Also, you know, uh, temperature and gauges and stuff like that for the engine back there. Um, you will need two push buttons for the notching system, a toggle button for the reverser, a lever for the brake handle, You'll need two toggle buttons as well for the MU and DPU systems. I'll get to that in a bit, minute here. Uh, you'll need a push button for the fuel cutoff, another push button for the primer slash start, that'll be for the engine there, uh, and then a radio antenna, and then a keypad for the radio antenna. Alright, that said, let's get into this. So, uh, first, what you want to do, you'll probably also want a locomotive already kind of built and going up, but I'm just using one of mine for uh, example here. Uh, so this will probably differ for you as you go. Uh, anyhow, let's go into our logic. Now we'll have our composite here. So this will go for a radio input and output. So again, you'll want that small radio or, well, any radio will work, I guess. So you want to put your radio input to there. Mm -hmm your radio output to there. Pretty simple. Now, uh, going to our data. This uh, does look intimidating, but uh, don't let it um, bug you too much. It's pretty simple. All right, Everything's pretty much self-explanatory, so we'll go over basics here. So these two here, these will be for your prime mover throttle and your traction motors. Now, their traction motors will be for your truck set, which I have simply just here. You can kind of see it. There's the truck set. You have a gearbox going to the truck set and then the electric motor. Um, that, in our case, would be the traction motor. Uh, now, uh, that's other two things I forgot to recommend. You're going to also want a gearbox and small electric motors or medium sized, whatever size electric motors you want going directly to your truck set. How you have the gearbox configured is up to you, but at least make sure there's a reverse function in there somewhere set up. But we'll get to that in a minute. 
Alright, so what you're first wanting to do, your prime mover throttle, you want to take that, you want to bring that node all the way over here to your throttle for your prime mover, which is our diesel engine right here. And you also, if you have a gauge showing you what your throttle is at, you might want to set that as well. So I have one here, prime mover throttle, going to our control stand there. Um, and our traction motors, you want to set that to your electric motors. And then again, if you have a gauge for that, set that as well. For that, I have a throttle. So I'll s tell us what our throttle is at. Alright, continuing, we have our brake output and brake input. Now this is for our braking system. Now, we how we'll set this up, just take our brake output here, and we'll go ahead and set that to the brake node on our truck sets, or bogies, depending what country you're from. You probably also, like I said, if you have a dial for it, gauge, just set it to that. And our brake, brake input or output, what is this? Yeah, it's an input. Input, you want to take that, you want to set that to your lever for your brakes. Alright. Next step, you'll have these, your uh, just regular inputs and outputs. So, what you want to do here, we'll go, we'll start with the reverser. We have our reverser input and output right here. So, we'll take our output, we want to set that to our gearboxes. That will change our gearboxes from forward to backwards. Basically reverse forwards. Uh, now you don't need to worry about setting that to anything I guess. Uh, unless you have something to tell you what it's changed to. Like a little indicator or something. And then we'll take our, out our input, sorry, and we'll set that to a button here in the cab. So I have a toggle button reverser right down there. Now continuing off we have our radio DPU and our MU system, our down throttle or up throttle, and then our fuel cutoff. Now what we probably want to do, take the radio DPU on and we'll set that to a switch that I have back here in the back of the cab that's the DPU, uh, to our DPU. And we'll take the MU, and we'll set that to the MU switch in the back of the cab. Now what your DPU and MU is, basically, uh, diesel locomotives in real life here, at least in North America, they have MUs and DPU systems, well, depending how they're set up, I guess, to the corresponding railroad. But um, or your MU basically is you could have multiple units, that's what it stands for. Uh, so for example, you have three locomotives on one train. You have your head unit here and then you'd have two others behind it. And those would be responding to your, your you know, the controls in your first locomotive, so you have multiple units. Your DPU systems on, however, are basically the same but a little bit different. Uh, DPU standing for distribute uh, power units. Struggle there a little bit, sorry about that. Um, meaning that you could have locomotives in different places on the train. So for example, you'll have the head unit here in the front, and then you could have a unit in the middle of the train somewhere, or towards the rear of the train. Uh, that's what that basically is. Uh, what the radio is for here. So you'll be able to have multiple units for this train. Uh, or, well, in the game at least, responding to your one unit. Uh, I will go over a bit later after this tutorial showing you how that functions and how you operate it. Alright, continuing off, we'll have the fuel cutoffs node here, so what you want to do is take that to a push button here, fuel cutoff, so I have one in the back of the cab. And finally, you want to take your up throttle and down throttle nodes, so take your up throttle, set that to a push button, right here that you'll have in the cab, and they're down, we'll do the same thing. 
Alright, and that is it. So everything should be wired up. Of course you want to connect anything that has electricity to a battery or so. But I have already done that. I'm not going to show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. Uh, there's other tutorials showing you how to do all these other functions and stuff in Stormworks. Now what you're going to want to also do, which I believe I've neglected to do here, good thing I've caught it, take your um, your radio channel's input and output and go ahead and set that to the keypad here. So that way it tells what channel to set your radio to or for your DPU and MU systems. Without further ado, let's go ahead and spawn this in, show you how to operate it. Now, I already have a locomotive out there, uh, ready for the, just to kind of demonstrate the MU system. Alright, so we'll hop up here, get this thing started. So, first what we want to probably do is set up, turn all these on. I'll put our fuel pump on. Back here, just kind of turn on our prime mover there. Leave that on. Turn our truck set power on and our MU is on. So when you first have your locomotive started up, you always want to set your MU on if you're going to use this as the lead unit and have it in operation service. Uh, so now just turn on the cab light. Also, if you have a fuel pump, you might want to have that on. Uh, depending how you build your locomotives, they all will probably differ from each other. So we have a brake. That, of course, controls the brakes for our truck sets, which are down there somewhere. We have our up throttle, down throttle. So, see, we are in notch one right now. So this microcontroller, too, has up to eight notches just like a actual diesel electric locomotive. And I'll just couple up to the, um, well, I guess it doesn't want to. Rear locomotive there, um, or front. So we could go up to eight notches on this. Braking does work. The reverser also does work, so if we take the brake off, we could uh, now start rolling in reverse here. throttle down there. So that's how that works. Alright, now how you want to do your DPU systems, stuff like that. Uh, I'll just leave it set to zero there. Let's get the uh, other locomotive set up. Now, in reality I would want to connect these two, but for some reason they're not wanting to connect to each other, so I'm not going to bother with that. I'll just kind of show them Oops. if I could get up here. it would be nice. Get this started. Uh, get that going. Now, when you want to have a second unit, which I will show you here in a minute, just set the MU on. Set that channel to zero, because that's what the rear unit is set to back there. Have everything on. Truck set power. All right. So we'll just go back to here. This will be our trailing unit per se. For example, if I could get up here, it'd be nice. So our, what you want to make sure that your head unit that you'll be controlling from, you want to make sure the MU switch is on. Now back here, you want to make sure the MU is off on this one. You want to make sure the channels are set to the exact same channel. So 0.00 or for the both of these then you just simply hit the DPU button here and that's pretty much all you have to do here you just walk back to your head end unit alright okay that's kinda weird cab lights being that way alright so turn the brake off and both brakes will operate in both units same as the reverser and just throttle up. Although I believe I have left the reverser on in that unit because it is moving the opposite direction somehow. Um, quickly just fix that. Oh, can't get up. Alright. 
yep, I have left the reverser on, so let me... Yeah, want, you want to make sure you have not touched the reverser in the opposite unit, as I've just demonstrated there, and I can't get up. Alright. Alright, let's try that again. And, uh, there we go. They're both you moving simultaneously with each other. Now, this would be better if you had, um, course them both connected with each other which I have not done here but uh, you get the point uh, so they will both notch up the throttles so on everything and brakes will activate so on and then what you do when you're done GPUing or MUing whatever you want to call it at this point When you go to shut these things off, you just basically take the DPU off on this unit, and then you can turn the MU off on that locomotive. I'll go for the shutdown processes of this, so just go ahead and turn that off, make sure all your brakes are on. Alright, and simply just take the fuel pump off, and then you hold the fuel cutoff, and then it'll start. Um, Cutting the fuel off from the prime mover, and the uh, locomotive will simply just shut off. And you flip all your other breakers, and so on. And there, locomotive is off. We'll do the same with this one over here. Providing I can get up to the. Yeah, alright. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like me today. Uh, anyhow. Turn our MU off. That. And you can hear Prime mover shut off. And you want to hold this for probably 5 or 10 seconds. Make sure it fully shuts off. And there you go. And that is how to set up and operate the uh, microcontroller, the locomotive control system I have made. I hope you have found this, um, well, um, enjoyable, and um, I just can't speak today. Anyhow, I hope you found this helpful and uh, entertainable, I guess, I don't know. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like or whatever, but um, like I said, if you want to mess around with these GP9s I have made, they're be a link in the description for him, and then there will also be a link in the description for the microcontroller. I have been Spark. I hope you found this video helpful, and uh, have a good day. Happy railroading.